Well, here we are, year number two for you, Coach. First of all, how are you feeling just on your own with this full season, full off season? Now things are yours, as they say. You know, it's uh, it's different. You know, I think it. Uh, we felt a little rushed with the schedule being compressed last summer. Um, you know, we, if you think about it, it hasn't even been a year yet from the day I got hired. So we're we're, we're coming up to a year, um, but just to have the time um, that we've had, you know, and, and, and the goal of every off season it, is for it to be a short off season. Um, but having this time has been in, invaluable for us as a staff, um, for our for our guys, and just the level of synergy and chemistry that you, we can continue to build upon from player to coach and player to player. We didn't have that window last summer. I'm looking at Bradley Beal resigns with the organization after being here for 10 years. Now you got him for five more, but there's a kicker in there. That's a no trade clause. What does that say to you as a coach that one of your guys really wants to stay put? Well, yeah, it just shows his commitment, you know, to this organization, an organization that drafted him 10 years ago, gave him an opportunity and he's, he's took, he's taken full advantage of it. Um, you know, so I think it's great that he's, you know, investing uh, in us as much as we've invested in him. And so it's, it's a partnership that we look forward to um, continue to, to grow. And I think we'll really help push, uh, you know, push us in the right direction. You got two new Wizards who are former Nuggets who are quite familiar with your style of coaching and Will Barden and, of course, Monte Morris. What do they bring to the table that you, as a second-year head coach, are needing? You, you know, aside from, you know, positional need, you know, so forth, so on, you get two more uh, veteran guys who, who've won at a high level, who understand uh, the value of you know the, the team chemistry, playing for you know each other, the connectivity that you know we really strive to achieve. You know, having that corporate knowledge, you know, just from terminology, philosophical uh, things that they're already you know well entrenched. So uh, there won't be a, a ton of lag time to see them implement and, and really start to take hold of what we do and how we do it. New, new toys to play with, as they say. <laughs> Brad hasn't played with yeah. Porzingis yet. Yeah. Uh, obviously, Kuz, and then you bring in Morris and Barton, and even DeLon Wright as yeah. well. The East has gotten better. Mm -hmm. With the tools that you have available to you, where does this next season, where do the Wizards stand? What are your expectations for these guys moving forward? Well, yeah, yeah I think it, uh, the expectation, and you don't necessarily want to uh, put a number on it. Right. I think the, the important piece is you know, really strive to, to get better every day you know, and, and you know, start stacking those days. You know, I think those things become habit, and we can really hold on to our habits and our standards. I think that really gives us a chance to compete at a high level. Um, so it's easy to say, hey, we're, you know, we're going to win X number of games. That's terrific. But as we saw last year, uh, who knows? You know, the, the season has a, you know, a mind of its own. and You have to kind of endure some of the ebbs and flows, uh, some of the uncertainties that you just really can't uh, project. Uh, but I think if we can really stay grounded in our principles and, and – stay connected to what we're trying to build, and that will help get us through some of those tough, tough stretches. You're one of the fortunate organizations to still have their last three draft picks in the first round, and now you pick up Johnny Davis as well. Where are you at in the assessment of your young talent, and how can they contribute to the winning that you're expecting? Well, it's funny. The, uh, you know, I get that question quite a bit. The young talent, um, because of some of the things we had to go through, the, um, they, were, they were rotation players for us. So I think it helps expedite their maturation um, because you can't simulate those minutes in practice. So, you know, on the job training at times you have to live with youthful mistakes, but uh, they're going to be better for it. So I think that helps, you know, our depth, our versatility. Um, and there's a comfort knowing that those guys can go out and um, compete and, and can really help, uh, help Brad, help KP, Coos, um, to, to know you have, you know, nine ten guys you can play and you really feel good about the quality and depth that you have a lot of players moving around this free agency there's also speculation of you know bigger names in mm -hmm. certain markets that people think that they should belong in but what does it say about this organization and yourself as well that a guy like bradley bill a three-time all-star and all the accolades that come with it wants to stay in dc well i think he sees the vision he's part of that vision uh, he's not only uh, a piece of, of, of a bigger thing, but he, he understands his value, um, you know, the leadership piece. Um, the talent is what it is. That's been well documented. Um, but I think his, his character, um, and he, he prides himself on being a loyal guy. 
um, to you know not, not only an organization that gave him a chance, but to his teammates. Um, and I think he wants to see it through. There, there's, I'm sure, a gratifying feeling when um, you can kind of pull it together on your own. You know, and it's, it's going to take time. You know, you develop young guys. You have to draft smartly and make uh, moves to upgrade your roster. Um, of course, Tommy's in the business of talent acquisition. And it, but it's not just the talent. It's how does that talent fit? And I think that's what we're starting to see. It's, it, fits, it fits well. And, I, and I'm very excited, you know, for the opportunity to see this group kind of come together and, you know, coalesce this season. I think the, the potential is limitless. So we've talked about Tommy, we've talked about Brad, we've talked about the organization. Let's talk about you. What are your expectations for yourself this season and how do you achieve them? Well, you know, it was a, a thing that uh, in my last meeting with each player, uh, the, the importance of them coming back, better version of themselves. I hold myself and my staff to the same standard. Um, you know, and there's certain things we've been able to do this summer as a group, um, but I think it's important that we all come back, you know, with that experience that we had last season. But you know, we've got to push ourselves to get out of our own comfort zones, be better, uh, do better, and hold ourselves to a higher standard. You opened up a door there. So what improvements from last year? What was something that you didn't do as well as you wanted last year? Winning aside, yeah. what was something that you would like to improve on this season? Well, you know, it's, uh, it, it's one of those things where you, you feel like you talk too much, and I think it, you can never over-communicate enough, you know, individually, collectively, um, the messaging. Uh, I think it's just got to be constant. And, you know, at times I felt, man, these guys get sick, <laughs> sick of hearing me. <laughs> but they, they got to hear from me every day. Yeah. Um, and some, some of it's organic in nature. Uh, but I think it's just important to continue to have those open dialogues, uh, get their feedback, but also continue to hold them to a certain standard. And the, the, the issue of accountability can't waver. Ted has said this should be a free agent. You're one free agent away. Mm -hmm. Brad has reiterated that. Mm -hmm. Are your feelings the same? And if so, what is it going to take to find that free agent or draw them to this team? Well, I think the winning is obvious. You know, uh, everyone wants to be associated with winning. Um, you know, this franchise is, is proven that they're willing to do things to facilitate that. Um, the practice facility, uh, this arena in this city, a very attractive destination. Um, I think the winning piece is what uh, really catapults you into, into the conversation. Uh, a lot of that, too, it has, it has to be uh, relationships. You know, just as much as teams try to pull and away from our roster guys, I think it's, you know, it's a small, you know, brotherhood. And so players talk. And uh, they're, they're going to talk about some of the details, you know, how, how, do players, how are players treated? Uh, do we do things the right way? Um, do we care about people and their families? So, you know, I think once that word continues to, to get out, I think it, you, you really kind of set yourself up to, uh, you know, be an attractive destination. Well, the expectations from the fan base are at a fever pitch. I asked Brad a similar question. If there's any message you want to send to them with this final question, what do you want to tell Wizards fans? You got carte blanche. It's all you want. <laughs> well, you know, I, I think, um, you know, the, the way they received us last year was, was tremendous. Um, and, you know, we owe it to them to, to, to bring that competitive spirit, you know, night to night, you know, win or lose. Uh, there's a certain way we, we have to brand our, our way of basketball, uh, and that, that being the Wizards, Wizards way. Um, so there, there, there's things that fall under that category, but, you know, are we playing together and are we competitive? Those two things, we can walk away each night and say we've done those two. We're going to give ourselves a chance to win a lot of games. That's what it's all about, Head Coach Wes Unsell Jr. Thank you so much for your time, Coach. Thank you.